Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got solar eruptions to monitor. We're hitting several interesting pieces of science news, and at the end, a pretty bad piece of news for our future, which you should be used to hearing around here. But we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find a calm day in terms of solar flaring but not much else. It was basically an entire day of filament destabilizations. They began right at the release of yesterday morning's show, and they are still ongoing here this morning. We'll watch those again in 304 angstroms. Central longitudes got active first. Luckily, the eruptions went north and south, and then we saw the destabilization events at the departing limb, which sympathetically triggered the release of the incoming northern filament. That's erupting here now this morning. We'll be watching her release today. Let's kick off the science news with an always welcome trolling of the general circulation models. These really have allowed climate scientists to get away with a lot of stuff they shouldn't have, and here their garbage outputs are levied against reality and it does not stack up very well. It tends to happen when you base a forecasting model on politics. Up next, ecological event about to turn into an unusual mortality event off the California coastline. Extreme algae blooms are making the water toxic and a mad dash to save the creatures has begun. The algae are not only changing the oxygen content of the waters, but they release toxic chemical waste that sickens the animals. Work and treatments are underway. Up next, folks, a good reminder that whether you just know about bird migration with the magnetic field or you've heard about turtles and whales and dogs and bears using the field as well, chances are none of us really knows the full extent of the criticality of Earth's magnetic field for the animal kingdom, down to bacteria. Pole shift about to happen is a four-alarm fire for the entire food chain, down to the tiniest creatures and folks. In light of our big concern about increased vulnerability to solar storms during this pole shift, we've got Dr. Phillips at spaceweather.com bringing forth a confirmation of something we reported in March, but with greater detail and background. Building on the work of pioneer Dr. Feynman, who tracked the Gleisberg cycles and forecast that solar cycles were about to get bigger. A new study about proton bombardment taken from the South Atlantic anomaly shows we are indeed on the verge of the upswing. The minimum of the cycle was 2012, pretty much dead on solar cycle 24. Here we are in cycle 25 and it is a bit stronger and they think that's on deck again the next three cycles at least. I really hope not. Earth's magnetic field barely handled the 2023 and 2024 events. Its behavior here in 2025 so far isn't exactly boosting my confidence and if the next solar cycles are bigger, I don't see how we get through the 2030s without being thrown back into the Stone Age. That's our new timeline, folks. And folks, we've got a lot going on at Observer Ranch the rest of the season. Definitely time to come out and catch your other family reunion. Find your time to come see us and then lock it in. That happens at ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here. But right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.